so hello everybody and welcome back to another video and in this video we'll solve problem infected tree from code fuse round 798 and that was a tip too uh, so let's get started so uh, in the problem uh, we have been given a binary tree uh, that looks something like this and let's say uh, Right. Also, the root has been infected. Uh, the root has been infected, and uh, each second the infection spreads uh, to all the adjacent nodes. Uh, so, if the root is infected, in the next second, node one will be infected, and node two will also be infected. So, it will spread like this. Right. Uh, and we have been given an operation to. Uh, to like to control the spread we have been given an operation so in one operation we can remove any node we can remove any node let's say we remove this node we remove this node then the infection will not be able to spread to these nodes right then the infection will not spread to these five nodes so we have saved five nodes uh, so the infection will now spread to the second node right similarly we can remove this node and now the infection will not spread to these two nodes right so similarly we can remove some nodes and we have to uh, maximize the number of nodes that we have saved for example in this problem uh, like uh, in the following problem we have we have saved seven nodes so far so we have to similarly apply our operations and we have to maximize the number of nodes that we can save and we have to uh, answer the maximum number of nodes that we can save using these operations. So let's take some basic observations first that will help us solve this problem. So the uh, very first observation is that we apply one operation at every level we apply one operation at every level uh, what i mean by that is uh, let's draw a tree first to give you an idea so uh, firstly only the root is infected right so currently we have two choices either we can remove node one or we can remove node two it is never optimal to like uh, it is never optimal to remove any other node because if you are going to remove uh, let's say call let's call this node 3 if you are going to remove node 3 in this operation it is better to remove node 1 instead right because it, removing node 1 will help you save more nodes so in the first operation in the first operation let, let's call this level 1 in first operation you will always remove a node from level 1 so let's assume you remove node 1 let's assume uh, let's assume you remove node 1 then this whole subtree is saved now you have to choose the second operation the uh, in, in the meantime the infection will spread to node 2 now you have to choose the second operation right now you now you have to choose the second operation now uh, again you have two choices in level 2 right uh, you can either choose let's call this node 5 let's call this node 6 you can either choose node 5 or you can either either choose node 6 right uh, similarly if you choose node 6 here infection will spread to node 5 and you again go on to level 3 and you again go on to level 3 let's call this node 7 let's call this node 8 so again for operation 3 you will choose one node in level 3 right so uh, as you can see here in every level we do we do exactly one operation and like we uh, chose uh, we chose node 1 uh, in level 1 we chose node 6 in level 2 similarly we can either choose node 7 or node 8 in level 3 so in each level we have a choice the kind of node that we want to select right so that is our observation uh, you can see we have some kind of choice right and when you have some kind of choice you can think about knapsack uh, like so you can say this problem is kind of knapsack so how can we solve this now 
uh, now that we have observed we have choices and so you can uh, like kind of see this problem as a knapsack so to see this problem as a knapsack you can draw a tree again now you have two choices here right uh, let's call this root uh, let's call this node one let's call this node two now uh, like i showed you in the uh, previous diagram you have a choice you will either remove node one or you will either remove node two there is no other choice right you in the in, in first operation you have to either remove node one or you, you have to either remove node two so if you remove node one if you remove node one you will save this whole subtree you will save this whole subtree so your save count will be let's call save count will be the number of nodes in this subtree so nodes in subtree of node 1 right plus and now uh, you have saved node 1 so your infection will spread to node 2 your infection will spread to node 2 so now if you now if you like ignore the uh, ignore the bigger tree like you can see this as an independent tree now you can see this as an independent tree now right you can ignore this whole tree you don't care about the other tree now now you can see this as an independent tree right whose root is infected whose root is infected so this was your original problem right uh, uh, in the original problem you were given a tree whose root was infected and you have to tell the maximum number of you have to tell the maximum number of uh, nodes that you can save so now the infection has spread to node 2 and you are again asking the same problem right so you can see you can use a smaller problem to answer your bigger problem so uh, you can use dp here right so you can say number of nodes you can save number of nodes you can save with node to infected right so if my if my dp of i is if my dp of i is number of nodes number of nodes i can save with node i infected as root then i have two choices then then for every node i then at every node i I have two choices. Either save left node, let's call this node one, or save right node. Let's call this node two. If I save node one, then my dp of node will be equal to maximum of dp of node uh, number of nodes in because I, I have saved node one so all my children subtree of node one are saved so number of nodes in subtree of node one plus as you can see now my node 2 is infected now now my node 2 is infected and it and it can be seen as a root of a new tree so now you can just uh, write dp of node 2 here right now you can just write dp of node 2 here cause that is your smaller sub problem now right because your dp uh, because your dp defines uh, number of nodes i that can be saved with node i infect infected as root so now your node 2 has been infected as uh, root so now you can write dp of node 2 here similarly if if you save node 2 if i save node 2 
you can write dp of node is equal to maximum of dp of node number of nodes in subtree of node 2 now you have saved node 2 so now your node 1 will be infected so now you can write plus dp of node 1 here and that will be your solution to the problem uh, and in the end your answer will be your final answer will be your dp of root and in the problem you have been given that the tree is rooted at 1 so you can write dp of 1 also so that will be a solution to the problem uh, right so mm -hmm. if you want to see the code for this uh, here is the code uh, i have kept two vectors dp and count my dp vector stole the answer to the uh, question right the answer my dp of i maximum save nodes with i infected as root and my count of i stores nodes in subtree of i so uh, uh, first of all i count all the nodes in the subtree and then i just do a DFS and in the DFS you can see uh, for x uh, belonging to adjacent of node I run a DFS on that and then my dp of node is equal to maximum of dp of node uh, that is if I cut off node 1 then that is dp of node 2 plus count of node 1 my count of node stores the number of uh, nodes in the subtree minus 1 minus 1 because I am also counting the given node in the number of uh, in the count of subtrees so i have to i have to remove one layer for that mm -hmm. similarly if i cut off node 2 then my answer will be dp of node 1 plus count of node 2 minus 1 right and in the end i just print out dp of 1 the rest is just like some kind of implementation like you can uh, just try to implement the code on your own like even if you don't get the logic to a problem and you are much you are watching my videos just try to like get some hints from the video and try to implement your own don't try to copy my implementation as like it will form a bad habit uh, but if if you are very much stuck then i will recommend to watch my code or read my code or or uh, try to copy my code yeah so that was it for the video and if you guys have a doubt do let me know in the comments and i will be happy to help you out also, if you guys don't know, Continue Newton School is offering a full stack development course. The course is uh, over six months long and it is totally based on pay after placement model and you don't have to pay anything. There is zero hidden fees, there is zero upfront fees and they are granting you a minimum package of rupees 5 lakhs and the average package is rupees 7 lakhs and the highest package is over rupees 26 lakhs. So it is a very great opportunity. Also, all their mentors are from top MNCs like Google, Flipkart, Zomato, etc. Also, they will get you placed into the top MNCs as well, like Google, Flipkart, Zomato. Uh, so, uh, you can learn from the mentors that are working at those companies and you can land a job at those companies yourselves. Also, you don't need to worry if you guys think that I don't coding, I don't have fresh coding. The course is over 6 months long and they will teach you from scratch so you can still sign up for this and if you guys are looking for a career in the tech field this is a very uh, this is a very great head start that you should sign up for and if you uh, want to land a job i highly uh, i highly vouch for this and uh, if you guys want to sign up there will be a link down below and you can go and sign up from there so yeah be sure to sign up for this and i will see you in the next video Bye bye